So springs are pretty useful. So in this video, we're gonna go through and discuss how to design different types of springs and many of the common types of springs that can be designed and mass produced with 3D printing. So we're gonna go over several different types of springs from spiral to torsional to extension type of springs. And 3D printed springs have to be very different from any other types of springs. The one spring that we will never make is a coil spring. Coil springs don't work for 3D printing because you are not able to have a continuous cohesive kind of path in order to create a coil spring. You would end up having the layer line split if you printed it vertically and if you print it sideways, well, you actually can do that, but it's not really a coil spring. It's not combined in the way that you would normally do it. If you want to create an extension spring, a standard type of coil spring function, what you do is that instead of doing a spiral, you just look at that spiral from the top and create that profile. And now you have a very simple flat pack extension spring. These types of extension springs are really useful if you want to have some sort of resistance on a switch or a button or whatever it happens to be, or if you need something that just gives really easily right there. All it is is a simple curved path going back and forth and you can change how that path works Most of the time the easiest way to do it is just kind of design a set of pattern slots and make sure you round out the edges Do make sure you round out the edges Sometimes people make these springs like perfectly square But the problem with that is that you then have a stress concentration at those corners Make sure it's round now do these springs compare to regular circular extension springs? Well quite frankly, they're not quite as good because regular circular extension springs are phenomenal efficient because they distribute the force perfectly continuously all the way around that coil. Whereas with these types of extension springs, the force is concentrated at the rotation points. So if this breaks, it's going to break right there just below the curve where this thing is bending. Now, as far as the actual design of these, what you can do if you really want to engineer these things is you are looking at the part of the stress strain diagram of a material before it goes into permanent deformation. That is what this is doing. This is a bunch of small rods bending, basically. So you can design this spring based on the thickness of that rod and the numbers of them in order to determine how much extension and how much force you want. But that's probably a little bit too deep for this video, generally. The easiest way to do it is make these things thicker if you want it to be stiffer, make them thinner down to one millimeter if you want them to be softer. And one other way of making it a little bit tougher is to go from a very flat design to a very thick design, where now you have a lot more material which is able to bend so you can get a lot more resistance than what you would normally have. So those are the traditional kind of extension springs, but there's a lot of ways of rejiggering this because 3D printing lets you create weird and interesting geometries that generally don't come up very often. So what if you want just like a stabilizer ring? This is something where you would like mount something to a wall or to a brick and then you would have the actual item mounted on the inside. It might be some sort of transfer or transmission or just something that you want to vibrationally stabilize. These types of springs can stabilize in this direction because they're basically a set of extension springs around the outer side or it can serve as like a trampoline where you can mount something up there and then this gives and gives slack in that way, kind of like a membrane. This is a very useful type of spring for push buttons and that kind of stuff. If you had a box and you wanted to have a push button on the inside, you can design this type of spring so that this becomes the big red power button for the box and then depresses whatever is underneath. So that's kind of the utility of these types of springs. Now we start getting into other types of very traditional types of springs. Leaf springs. Leaf springs are another sort of mounting, stabilizing sort of spring where you want something to stay in position for the most part with a little bit of compliance. These can both compress and also slide side to side. They can be very useful because with leaf springs, you're able to create items where you want kind of tight control. You can create effectively like parallel mechanisms with leaf springs so that you can keep the orientation of a part in the same place as you move and depress it around. So leaf springs are useful for creating kind of controlled mechanisms while still having all the vibration, dampening, bending, and return that you want from traditional types of springs. However, these can be really finicky. You only have one or two bands of material to work with. So changing their strength is generally only through thickening something up. And now these can be really useful because a leaf spring is basically the material itself flexing by itself. So a leaf spring can be anything from a flat printed plate that's then bolted into place to these nicely little designed rings that again are printed in plane. This is the most important thing with 3D printed springs. All of the force has to be in plane along the layer lines to make sure that you don't have something snapping off. If you try to print this spring at an angle, you just ruined the spring. It has way less return. 
And this is actually the type of issue that we ran into with our SnapFit video, where we discussed that design problem. Snap fits are effectively springs with a little nubs at the top of it all. So we went through that a little bit over there. I recommend checking it out. But leaf springs are terribly useful. And then last, but certainly not least, spiral springs. These springs are very often, you see these in clocks, these are great for storing energy. You can twist them up and then return it so you can make toys, all kinds of useful things there. If you really wanna just have a fidget spinner, you can do those kind of things, but those aren't really what they're intended for. Coil springs are generally energy storage devices. As compared to all the other ones, which are stabilizers, vibration deadening, that kind of stuff, coil springs are really about storing up energy because you have all these coils very densely packed. And again, you can make these springs thicker the way we did with this so that you can store up a lot more energy inside of these. So wind up toys, mechanisms for lids, all those types of things can be done with coil springs. It's a very tight, compact way of getting twisting motion into a space. You can make the whole feed thicker in order to make it much stiffer on the outside if you're just wanting a spring for like opening a lid and then closing a lid or you can make it thinner, have many more coils, and then make it thicker in this direction in order to create much more energy storage. But those are the primary types of springs that you will see with 3D printing. One side benefit of almost all of them is that since they are printed flat, many of them can be printed within a print themselves. So if you have some plastic part that has been printed like this, you can continue printing the spring inside of the part and fully encase it in a way that you cannot with other processes. So you're effectively assembling a machine as it's being actually manufactured. So you can have springs embedded inside a system so that you now have have a deadening, dampening feature inside of the part that otherwise would have had to be installed or built in three pieces or something like that. 3D printing lets you grow up an entire part with springs and mechanisms inside of it, which is pretty darn cool and something that has never been possible for with traditional manufacturing. So you're able to create new types of products that are way more competitive than anything that has come before because nothing before could make this type of stuff. So hopefully that helps you. Excited to see what you all build. Have a great day, everybody.